Frank Roach from the Hurls. Um, what are your initial thoughts of Dublin eventually battering Cork today? Uh, well, they got a proper test for almost an hour there, you'd have to say, tonight. Mm. tonight though. I mean, they, even though Jim Gavin rejected the suggestion afterwards, they looked a little bit like a team who had been caught up with not play, facing a really good test in those first 10 minutes. I mean, mm. they, they leaked four, go, four points very quickly. They were five points down before Jack McCaffrey got his goal. And from that time on, you just knew Dublin were going to wear them down. Yeah. Now, to Cork's credit, they, they hung in there and hung in there and hung in there. Uh, I, I even thought when Michael Darren McCauley uh, slam dunk Dublin's second goal in first half injury time, that's it, like six points down, they're just mm. going to pull away from here. But Cork just refused to go away. And uh, Luke Connolly's penalty seemed to breathe fresh life into their legs at that stage. They were two points down. You're thinking, is something on here? But to be as quickly as, as you thought that, Dublin were up the mm. far end and had a point got. And they were just keeping, Dublin, keeping Cork at arm's length. And then in the space of five minutes after the hour, they just killed them. And that's what Dublin would do. What do you make of the, these palmed goals and like the fisted points have come under more scrutiny lately as well because they kind of do just suck the oxygen out, well the fisted point does, with the palmed goals as well. You'd think in football you should at least have to kick the ball once before it goes into the net. Uh, I know but you're like, I mean Kerry were doing that back in the, back in the 70s and, and, and they were allowed to sort of catch the ball and then hand pass to the net. It's there, I mean to be honest I've rarely seen Michael Darmacolli kick too many goals or even more so points for Dublin. So. Uh, uh, I thought we saw hints of his uh, his basketball roots there, the way he, he took that goal. Yeah. But uh, in fairness, if you look at the way Dublin took their, their three goals late on, uh, Niall Scully has been a really brilliant goal poacher for Dublin over the last mm. year or two. He's probably scored as many goals as points, I'd say, in a blue jersey. Um, the way he just steadied himself before finishing that goal chance just showed a player who you know who doesn't panic in that situation. And likewise, Kieran Kilkenny a couple of minutes later, one on one, he knew he wasn't going to miss, and that's where Brian Fenton's late bullet. You know, it was a real kind of sickener for Cork. I thought. Like you've been covering Dublin for many years at this stage, you know, like you would have thought once Jim McConnelly leaves the scene, once Paul Flynn leaves the scene, you know, guys winning multiple losses in, in Flynn's case for sure, that uh, you know the team wouldn't be as strong anymore. But you're putting in Scully there, Brian Howard. Are these guys the same individual talents as the likes of Flynn and Connolly, or is it more about the? I don't know, whatever the game one or, is. One or two of them, they may not, uh, very few players have the, if any, have the individual brilliance, the mercurial brilliance of Dermot Connolly. But, you know, they, they fit seamlessly into the plan and they're, they're great team players and that's what really sets them apart. But I think the, 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 the most important development with Dublin over the last couple of years is the fact that the, the mid-twenties generation have really taken ownership of this team. Mm. They, most of them are on the same minor team. I'm just thinking of, you know, Jack McCaffrey, Kieran Kilkenny, uh, Brian Fenton, who actually wasn't on that minor team yeah. but was the exact same age. Uh, players like that have just, they are the guys taking responsibility mm. and driving Dublin forward. And, you know, you still have the key, the, the elder statesmen in defence who are still have big, big roles to play. I mean, Keno Sullivan obviously started tonight, Mick Fitzsimons, uh, and then you had, of course, James McCarthy, who three weeks ago people were wondering if he'd kick another football this year, yeah. coming back in the last couple of minutes, and Johnny Cooper coming back for his first appearance uh, since the league in March. So when you look at Dublin's uh, the, the starting lineup they had, more so the the bench they were able to name tonight and the players they brought on, you're thinking, Do you know, they're looking stronger and stronger. Uh, the injury issues that might have been there seem to have gone away. Um, with Roscommon losing to Tyrone in, um, in the, their Super 8's match in, in the Hyde, it really looks like Dublin should, barring, uh, barring the shock of the century nearly, Dublin should all but seal their uh, semi-final place mm. here in Crow Park next weekend. Like finished up with 5.18, but for a long time, it really was a game. For an hour, it, w it was probably a game. I mean, that's an unfair reflection on Cork. I mean, mm. you know, some of the points they, they scored early on, just their ambition, their energy driving at the heart of that Dublin defence and you know they, they would be worries for Jim Gavin uh, you know they, they leaked a lot of scores from play in that first half Cork should have had a goal uh, I think Brian Hurley had a shot when really he should have hand passed the ball across the square for I think it was Luke Connolly who surely would have had a, mm. a Michael Darren McCauley slam dunk goal you know but for it and that would have Cork that would have brought Cork back possibly level at the time 
So, you know, there, it's not that there, are, there aren't issues in this Dublin team. It's not that they're totally invincible because this was a 13-point victory, but it wasn't 13-point cakewalk. Mm. You know, it wasn't like some of the Leinster matches we've seen. And, you know, if, you, if you're to look at the, the average age at defence now, there are a lot of players that are, th- like Cluxton, he's obviously 37-ish, uh, Michael Fitzsimons, he's around the 30 mark, Philly McMahon, uh, Keen O'Sullivan, even Michael Darren McCauley. A lot of miles on the clock there, and those players have been there for so long. When these two teams last played in the championship, uh, was it 2015? Like 13 of the same players used, were you also used last week for Dublin, whereas it was seven for Cork as well. Do you ever wonder, will the dominance come to an end? I'd say, like, uh, they're not going to keep winning every All-Ireland. Mm. I mean, to be honest, as we look at it here, I don't know when or how they're not going to win the Leinster Championship if the championship structure remains the way it is. And that's as much an indictment of uh, the Meads and Kildares of this world, who really are the only two counties who, in terms of numbers, uh, should be able to challenge Dublin at this stage. Mm. That's not happening at the moment. So, you know, you're, you're in a scenario where Dublin are going to get to the Super 8s. Uh, they're going to be, I would say, in an All-Ireland semi-final every year, barring some very unforeseen disaster. Because, I mean, remember, they've been in every semi-final since 2010, mm-hmm. and they've got stronger and stronger since then. So there are still uh, less than a handful of counties out there in any year who can challenge them, really, really challenge them, if everything goes their way and if there are a few chinks in the Dublin Army on a particular day or if injuries hit them at the wrong time. And, like, I, I never really expected Cork to be that team who would take them down tonight. Um, I, I wouldn't say I was necessarily surprised with them, but I was encouraged by definitely their form for that first, that first hour. But you're waiting to see whether Tyrone... Uh, whatever happens in Omen a couple of weeks time that could be a dead rubber you know it might be a case of both teams are true and there might be a bit of shadow boxing but you know whether in a straight knockout semi-final or final whether a Tyrone uh, a Donegal Mayo or Kerry from the other group you know can take them down and at the moment you have to say they're still out in front If you were to try and pick some sort of um, you know because I think a lot of people are just sick of Dublin winning at this point and I know like you work for a paper that focuses you know a lot on Dublin as well and you're, you're at every league game and every O'Byrne Cup game and, and what have you do you think there's any hope for the other teams like conceding 117 today going 5 points to 1 behind do you think a better team might have been able to capitalise even more or is it just like the All-Ireland last year ultimately they're going to kick on when they need to well the, the great arguably the greatest strength of this Dublin team is uh, their ability to come up with the right answers when they're really pushed to the pin of the collar. And by that I mean, you know, playing a Mayo in an All-Ireland final, 10, 15 minutes to go, they're a point down. Mm. And they don't panic, and they haven't panicked. You know, uh, a couple of mm. years back against Kerry, when Kerry hit them for uh, two goals and several points in the run-up to half-time, and I think it was five, there were five points out at half-time. Yeah. Do you know, you were saying, Dublin are showing real signs of creaking here. But they find a way, and that's what they're really good at. And you mentioned about the players you know who are driving it on and that you know the dear mcconnelly's of this world you know dermot isn't on the part of the setup for the last year year and a half bernard brogan isn't getting near the 26 but the new generation have come in and we saw it here tonight i mean jack mccaffrey is so pivotal to everything good about this dublin team because when the face of defense you know that be it not necessarily cork or doing tonight but you know when they pack numbers and they're hard to break down and they're wondering how you're going to do it jack has that x factor that dynamism, that acceleration that takes from A to B through the first tackle and suddenly the game opens up. Mm. He's one of those. I thought uh, Howard tonight was immense. I thought it was the best game he's played this year. Uh, he hasn't been up to this point. I wouldn't have said he's been at the same level as he was last year. But he was just the key player in that middle third in the first half. In, you know, instigating the moves that created the chances and ultimately the scores for Dublin. Um, and, and Conor Callaghan, we talk about the next generation. Conor is a couple of years younger than, than the McCaffrey's of this world. But in the first half, he was brilliant. I mean, he, I think he finished with four points from play. Uh, set up a couple of goals. Set up a couple of goals. Nearly won a penalty early on. You know, he just, it's, he has the physicality, the strength to win his own ball, the ambition to burst through that first Ooh. tackle. You know, his first instinct is nearly always go forward, you know, go for the jugular. And... You know, he was in he was in brilliant form again as well tonight. Thanks, Frank.